feel like Facebook ads are just not working the way I want them to work, it's probably because you're making this common mistake and it happened to me last month as well. Let me explain. Running Facebook ads could be a very stressful activity because in order to make money on Facebook ads, you need to invest money. It's not only that you invest money, but you're also hoping to, ma to make your money immediately, right? And basically your business success, your career, in many cases strongly depends on your ability to run profitable ads. But as we already know, Facebook ads are not working all the time. There are many inconsistent days. For example, on some days you're making a bunch of purchases, on the other days the cost per purchase is way too high and we're all stressed. We hate Facebook ads, we hate Mark Zuckerberg, we hate the world. Pretty much we hate everybody when Facebook ads are not working. So this common mistake has a lot to do with orchids. Orchids. Yes, you hear that right? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Orchids. Orchids. I think I got it right. Now let me play you a clip. When I first started growing orchids, I thought they needed the most expensive soil and lights to blossom. And they died. That's when I realized that all they really needed was time and attention. Just the way growing orchids doesn't require the most expensive soil and lights, running Facebook ads doesn't need the best ad, the best video ad, elite level copywriting. Of course, I don't say that these things are not important. I think that if you have much better copywriting, much better video ads, you're gonna improve your Facebook ads result dramatically. But this is not what this video is about because there are a bunch of tutorials that teach you how to structure your Facebook ads copy. There are a bunch of tutorials that teach you how you can shoot the best video ad ever. On top of that, you can go on ChatGPT and MidJourney and generate a bunch of ads that will be close to perfect. The mistake I see people making does not necessarily has to do with running bad ads. The mistake people make is that they don't know when to turn off the campaign and they don't know when to leave the campaign running. I know it sounds simple, but it is not simple at all because if you understand this, you'll be able to make a lot of money on the long term. Money. Now first, let's look at the fundamentals. What if you leave the right campaign working? If you leave the right campaign working, you make a bunch of money. What's gonna happen if you leave the wrong campaign working? You're gonna lose a lot of money, your Facebook ads won't work, you're gonna be like, oh, Facebook ads are not working, Facebook ads are difficult. It's difficult. So just by knowing what campaigns to leave working and just by knowing what campaigns to kill, you're gonna save a lot of money. So you're gonna have a lot of money to invest in what is working already. To understand what is working, I said it is not simple. And in order for you to understand what is working, you need to understand first how you can grow a big pumpkin. In order for you to grow a big pumpkin, one of the most important things you must do is to pick a seed from a pumpkin that's already been big. If you pick a seed from a small pumpkin, you just grow another small pumpkin. And this is what people do in their Facebook ad accounts. They just replicate things that are not working. And I'm gonna give you the example because I'm gonna take you inside my computer and I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go to the ads manager and we're gonna open one of our campaigns. As you can see on my screen, I have my ad account and there is a bunch of data coming in. There is frequency, cost per lead, cost per purchase, delivery, and this all seems confusing. If I wanna understand what's really working, there are two things I need to look at. The first thing is the cost per result. For you, the cost per result might be the cost per lead, the cost per registration, the cost per purchase. If the cost per purchase, let's say, is higher than you can afford, it's time for you to turn off this campaign. Right, as you can see in my ad account, I have campaigns that delivered cost per purchase of 160, 144, 110, 108. I have campaigns that went all the way up to 200. And here, I know that for me to make this ad account profitable, I need to keep the cost per purchase under 150. So anything above 150, I'm just gonna turn it off. As you can see, this campaign delivered a cost per purchase of 163, cost per result of 163. In my case, that's why this campaign, I'm just gonna turn it off. This is my way to understand what is working. 
lower cost per result. The next thing that you need to do would be to figure out how many results are you getting. Because here, as you can see, the cost per result might be lower, but my purchases are very low. So I have a cost per purchase of 49 and I just made one purchase. This is not enough data for me to decide if I want to leave this working. Obviously, I'm going to leave it working, but I don't know for how long because this campaign might start spending money and the cost per purchase might go all the way up, all the way up to 300. So my job as a media buyer would be to go into my ad account and the first question I have is what is working and what is not working. So the things that are not working, I'm just gonna turn them off and the things that are working, I'll leave them working. And here it's pretty simple, but there is something else that people don't understand. For example, as I explained earlier, this campaign only spent around $50. So I cannot make decisions based on $50, right? I just need to give this campaign time. How much should I spend? It's a very difficult question. I usually like to spend the cost per result by three, four times. For example, I can, if I can afford to spend $100 on purchase for this ad account, I might spend around three to $400, if that makes sense. I'm just gonna leave the campaign working. If I see $300, I have zero sales, zero purchases, I'm gonna kill the campaign, right? And it's extremely, extremely simple. So what you need to do after you start your campaign, you just need to leave the campaign working for some days in order for the campaign to generate some amount. You need to feel if this campaign will be a good campaign or a bad campaign. But what a lot of people don't do, they're not patient enough to wait for the campaign to spend enough money to just start working, right? For example, here I might see, oh, this campaign only spent $76 and it generated zero purchases. But tomorrow, if I leave the campaign for another day, the campaign might generate one purchase and the cost per purchase might be $96, which in my case is very, very good. And in this case, this campaign might generate a lot of money. For example, as you can see here, this campaign generated 14 purchases and the cost per purchase is close to $100. And this is very, very good campaign for me. And I've been running this campaign for maybe a few weeks. So here, another example, this campaign, I was very patient with this campaign. This campaign spent around $614. Uh, I saw that a lot of people are adding um, the product to the basket, to the card, but at the very end, people were not buying. So the cost per result was $204 and I decided to turn off this campaign. Of course, there is a lot of optimization that you need to do, but this is on the very high-end level. Those are the things that you need to do first in order to ensure that you're running the right campaigns. Another thing I would like to address, as you can see, I have all these columns. In order for me to arrange these columns, I'm just gonna click on columns. I'm gonna click on customize columns and I'm gonna turn on the columns that I really need. For my case, this is purchases. As you can see, I added purchases. In my case, this could be leads. As you can see, I can add leads. And here from the same menu, you can select the total, the cost, the unique cost, the value. So in order for you to see this more accurately, you need to set up the Facebook ads pixel. And if you go to my channel, I have some videos where I teach you how to set up the pixel for WordPress. If you wanna learn how to actually scale ads and if you wanna run how to target specific groups and specific pages with Facebook ads. I've created an online course that will teach you exactly how you can do that. The online course is called the Targeting Academy. And if you click the link in the description below for the next four days, you're gonna get $100 off. After the four days expire, the course will go to a regular price, which is $297. And I truly believe that for $197, with this online course, you're gonna go from beginner to advanced and you'll be able to generate very, very good results. So this was the video for today. My name is Nico. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you go and watch all my videos starting from the very old. Just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.